Our second speaker is a community builder, connector, and champion who secretly likes to count. She specializes in supply chain, transportation, and logistics. She has a passion for people and public policy. Please welcome Brindis Whitson. Welcome to 135 days. 350 days ago was a regular day. When I look back, it was a perfect, ordinary day. I spent the morning with a friend and the afternoon cleaning the basement with my mother and, and chatting away like we always did. She went home and studied for her intro to military history final, and I went to Girl Guides at the Calgary Young Offender Center. My mom went to bed, and two hours later, she woke up with pain in her left hip and right calf. Six days and th uh, three trips to the ER later, we found out that the true culprit of that was meningitis, streptococcal meningitis, not muscle spasms. But the next six minutes aren't about our personal episode of house or about my new friend's stroke, endocarditis, and meningitis. Uh, but they're about the five or six learnings over the next 135 days and the 135 days after she passed. Lesson number one, stay in the present moment. I've read hundreds of books about, that talk about being in the present moment. Things that say when you're feeling guilty, you're in the past, or when you're fe feeling anxious, you're in the future. But it had to hit me with a 2.4 of meningitis to really truly get it. And what I found, especially in the ICU days, was that you had to be focused on what was right in front of you and leave the what ifs, the why me's, and the why hers for another time and place. I had to eat differently, I had to think differently, and I had to do it as much as possible because I had to. Lesson number two, pay attention to the synchronicities. Every time I started to think why, then a synchronicity would show up to remind me that there was a reason we this had to be our path. And my goodness, were there a lot. There was well over 25. They included doctor number 11, uh, who was two years ahead of me all the way through elementary, junior high, and high school. Uh, there was walking into the cardiac ICU and a waiting room, and my husband's best friend's mother came into the waiting room, and we actually should have been her house in Carstairs had it been a regular Christmas. Or there was my aunt actually ended up being a part of at the same unit as my mother. Uh, we almost got them to be roommates, but not quite. And then the one that always still gets me is I ran into a, do I ran into a doctor uh, who was from St. Louis. I ran into him once, uh, twice. He actually takes random shifts and is doing his PhD in hydrocephalus, one of the things, my mother's many complications. The synchronicities are the universe's way of telling you you're on the right track. Lesson number three, celebrate the small wins. My mom and I s started a calendar t in early January so she could remind herself about how far she had come. And that was, I call them the small wins. And it was everything from when she opened her eyes uh, after the second sedation to every friend and family that came to visit, including the dog, until he came every day to the hospital and then we stopped counting. Uh, and then it was, or when we moved units or when we, uh, she had solids for the first time or when she finally got outside for fresh air. And it's the first tip that I give to anyone because it's the small wins that even in the darkest moments there are there. And they will, it's the small wins that will remind you about how far you've come. Lesson number four, you come in cohorts. Within an hour of my mother passing, so did my friend Marcy's mom. And since then, at least eight to 10, if not more, friends have, and colleagues have actually had uh, their parents pass away. And I've had at least three sets of friends with parents in the ICU, and man, do I have tips for you if you want them. Uh, and what I think ha this happens is to remind you that we are not alone, even in the moments when you think you are. Lesson number five. Even seeds need to unravel before they can grow. I have fought the unraveling. I need to stay strong. I'm afraid to cry. Partially because I'm, a, I'm nervous that if I start, I won't stop. So I had a romantic comedy like unraveling involving a fight with my dad, a run in the rain, and after midnight running from tree canopy to tree canopy just to stay dry. And I looked up and the, the rain was actually in sideways sheets 
And I thought, wow, this is Hollywood epic. And then I thought, uh, gone inside, laughing, crying, a little wet and soggy, and my husband Scott turned to me and said, even seeds need to unravel before they can grow. Even in the darkness spread light is lesson number six. It is what it is. I can't and couldn't change what was happening or has happened to my mother. The, inf the meningitis, the stroke, the heart infections, the breathing tubes, her inability to communicate, or the fact that she will never get to meet her grandchildren. But what I can change is the way that I respond to it. And like making a joke in uh, the elevator on a Saturday afternoon in January, in the elevator, where I was with people who were not looking like they were having a good day, or wearing my shirt that says, with nutcrackers on it, that said, crushed it. Uh, I had to be my mother's voice and her sarcastic wit. And on the day she passed away, we had two really good, good jokes. We put a little eye mask on her that said, don't disturb me right now. And the only thing, two, two things that are certain in life are death and taxes. And my mother, with her ever sarcastic wit, decided that uh, that would be a, a, April 30th, the day taxes would, were due, was, would be a day, good day to go out. It's been 109 days, or tomorrow will be t uh, 30 weeks, because I seem to count more in weeks than days now, and since my mother officially passed. And in 135 days that she was in the hospital, th here's some of the count. 363 nursing shifts, 21 do doctors, well, doctor number 18 was doctor number 21, uh, two hospitals, three if you count the hotels twice, six units, 10 beds, over 40 visitors, and well over uh, 50 chest x-rays. And on day 135, we went home, filed our taxes, because that's when they were due, and I opened up this book on angel numbers, and number 135 reads, a significant healing with friends and female relationships is a welcome blessing. It is brought about by the positive thoughts and affirmations that you've been working with lately. Keep affirming the goodness within yourself, your mother, and the important females in your life to heal and open you even more. Thank you.